Velachara offers seniors beautiful apartment living. It's a special secure place to belong, providing choice, freedom and professional care. Each spacious apartment comes with an ensuite, veranda, security and on-call nurses. Entertain your guests in the elegantly appointed shared spaces. Our vibrant activities program will keep your mind and body active. Bella Chara welcomes new residents. Call us today on 52025300 for a personal tour. Welcome back to News Geelong with sports tonight from the Buckley's Entertainment Centre, where recently Craig Keating was voted in as the chairman of the commission of the new Barwon region in a watershed moment for local footy. More of that later. But first tonight, we speak to Jamie Veal, winner of the Sprint Cars President Cup at Avalon recently. He's speaking to Gavin White. Well, a pleased winner of tonight's 32nd running of the Essendon Ford President's Cup here at Avalon Raceway is Warnable's Jamie Veal, driving for a Sydney car owner, Dave Doherty, who in turn you've had success with back in Sydney and now translate that here tonight at Geelong. How pleased are you? Oh, yeah, it's, I'm over the moon. It's, um, it's a great team effort and uh, especially at Avalon, I've raced here for so many years and there's a lot of supporters and sponsors here. So to um, bring that team down here and win and like, in such a big field and um, big crowd, it's it's great. Are you surprised it was a shutout of the podium for the Americans? 15 of them here, some of them race for a living. All top three were Australian. That's good to see too. And uh, yeah, it's hard. Like it just goes to show you how tough it is. And uh, like the Americans, they do it night in, night out. And they have bad nights, they have good nights like everyone. So um, that's good. And yeah, it's just a, it's good to get a win for quality field. Early race leader Stephen Bell seemed like he had good pace in clear track. Did you think you had anything for him? Should you have got to traffic? Well, uh, it just depends a bit. Like uh, on a long run, maybe with a bit of lap traffic. But yeah, other than that, he, he was pretty comfortable out front, and uh, the high line had a fair bit of pace. So uh, it's hard to say. It's a rich win, ten thousand dollars. Your second in a month. You did one similar back in Sydney. Yeah, it's great. Um, helps pay the bills at the team owner, and just you know, just all those little extras you need, and uh, especially when they find a couple crew down and down here and we go to Adelaide next week so it always helps. Congratulations on a superb drive Jamie. Thanks. Thanks Gavin and Jamie. Now we're down to Torquay for the Great Australian Thong Challenge with Ian Nichols. Well it's Australia Day 2013, a little bit cool down here at Cosy Corner of Torquay for the Great Australian Thong Challenge. Now last year more than 1,100 people turned out in Torquay, not as many as Cottesloe Beach in Western Australia, they currently are the Aussie champions. But today Torquay is hoping to go one better and it's looking good at this early stage. Well last year it was over 1,100 Chad, obviously you're hoping to better that this year. Exactly, we'd love to better that and it'd be great to see everyone down here and support it and uh, beat Sydney and the other states, that'd be great. Well, as far as we know, the record holders are Cottesloe in WA, and they're our biggest challenge this year again, I would say. Yeah, I think so, them and Bondi, but all the states are participating well, but I'm, I certainly uh, think Victoria's going to give it a good nudge this year. Well, now, it is all for a good cause as well, isn't it? Yes, that's right. It's um, to support your nipper clubs, your local surf life saving and nipper foundation, so please come down and help support that. Well, they're certainly getting into it. We've had a nice sort of prelude with kids' races on the beach, getting into the spirit of things on this Australia Day. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Australia Day is relevant for everyone. There is other activities down here and it's turning out to be a nice day. Well, now, the idea of the giant thong, do you know how that originated? Yeah, look, it comes from, uh, obviously, our main product line, the Haviana's thong itself, and it's just so relevant to the beach and pool culture of Australia, so it's about having a bit of fun and enjoyment. Now, are these uh, inflated here at the beach? You've got some sort of machine that pumps them up? Yeah, multiple, multiple machines that can take um, thongs several at a time. So they're all uh, inflated here and ready to be picked up for registers online or register here on the day. Well, it looks like registrations are going pretty well and I'm pretty confident you're going to exceed the 1100 from last year. Oh yeah, let's hope so. It's looking good. So I think we should give it a, a good shot at that number. Well, these thongs look fantastic with the Australian flag on one side and the uh, sponsor's message on the other. They're, what size are they, do you know? No, look, they're, um, I think they're just over uh, 1.3 metres in length, uh, 1.7 metres in length. So, yeah, they're definitely fun to get down on. There's some mini versions available for the little kids as well. At the Great Australian Thong Contest at Cozy Corner Torquay, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thanks, Nico. Now we speak to Andrew Scottford, CEO of the Geelong Supercats with news earlier in the week that they could have a move back to the NBL for the first time since they left in 1996. Well, Andrew, there's been a bit of news this week about the uh, return possibly for a Geelong side to the NBL. Must be exciting times around the uh, st stadium and offices of basketball Geelong. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all triggered sort of by Andrew Gaze's recent comments about, you know, if you're going to expand the NBL, think about places like Geelong. And clearly that fits in sort of the conversations we're having. You know, we're, we're building our plans for this the next five years. And, you know, everyone sort of talked about when you want to go back to the NBL or would you consider going to the women's NBL? And it's just, I guess, highlighted that is very much on our agenda and there's lots of work to be done. But it's certainly exciting for other people talking about it as opposed to just us talking about it. But there's been no formal discussions with Basketball Australia. It's all in the preliminary sort of stages at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Very preliminary. It's kind of them understanding that it's, it's, it's in our headspace and also then us sort of working in some bit more detail. I mean, one of the things that this, I guess, recent opportunity gives us is the opportunity to sort of test with, you know, other people that might be interested about it to see is there a genuine interest, you know, how do people, you know, respond in the media about it being, you know, you know our competitions are restarting this week. So it allows us to sort of see is there sort of that general interest. And what's very important is, of course, understanding that, you know, how does the facility issues, you know, get resolved into the short and medium term you know what are the opportunities around sort of key corporates to get involved and asking people to commit you know millions of dollars right now but it's what is the general interest and then how do we build a you know good plan to actually achieve it in a reasonable time how important is it for you to just come on board last year at the at the supercats to build a sustainable model firstly in the Siebel and the local level before you really do put this to basketball australia well, that's really critical. I mean, one of the reasons why, you know, Basketball Geelong and the Supercats, you know, got a closer partnership was about understanding that there's a lot of people that play basketball in Geelong and then there's a lot of people interested in Supercats. But if you wanted to get ever in a conversation around playing in the National League, you need to find a way to harness, I guess, the power of both those components. So, you know, clearly it's only sort of in the first 12 months and we're excited about the steps we've made. We're excited about the lists we've built, you know, before Christmas. I mean, we're well and truly advanced of, you know, the list and some of the names we've been able to unveil over the last month have been very exciting. So we really confident we'll still be a, a good team that's successful on court and will own this own this arena facility and that just gives another reason why when we put that model in you know, eventually to a basketball Australia they have more confidence to understand that we can build crowds already we can build a good on court prop product we also can be really good off court. How important also is it a new town in, pretty much in Armstrong Creek being built just down the road that this has in the whole process? Well, there's an opportunity, isn't it? I mean, that's a, that's what the, the city's about. That's where they're expanding. That's another 60,000 people over sort of the next 10 years. And, you know, they're deep in planning as to what sort of that suburb looks like. So it does give an opportunity to have options. You know, if the arena is not the facility that can possibly be expanded to 4,000 seats, well, you know, whatever that number needs to be, then, you know, we can add that into the conversation around Armstrong Creek. If they're looking to build an entertainment precinct there and having sort of as a, a showcase piece of a large facility to not just have, you know, hopefully an NBL or women's NBL Side, but also possibly larger size concerts and you know even facilities for our community that are bigger than this one it just gives another another I guess reason to go well let's really talk about not just making it 3,000 because that's our current capacity let's think about what we might like to have in five to ten years and 20 years time and here's another piece of the puzzle that we think will help you know create better facilities as well. Thanks a lot Andrew and as we go to the break don't forget you can follow us on Twitter at NewsGeelong31. Stick around we'll be back with more after this.